So, you are welcome to the course Manufacturing Process 2. We are continuing module 3 Machinability and this is the last lecture under Machinability. Now, today's lecture number 3.4, today we shall deal with advanced cutting tool materials. You know in manufacturing cutting tools play a very important role and the materials specially has got significant effect. Last lecture we covered conventional cutting tool materials. Today we shall cover the advanced cutting tool materials. Now what are the contents of today's lecture? <coughs> After listening to this lecture, the students will be able to classify, illustrate the properties and suggest the applications of the advanced cutting tool materials like coated carbides, cermets, coronite, high performance ceramics, cubic boron nitride and diamond. Now let us start with coated carbides. We have already discussed in the last lecture the manufacturing technology, the history and applications of carbide, cemented carbide tools comprising of cobalt as a binder and tungsten carbide grains held by the binder. Now it was also mentioned that what there are certain properties which are essential required by the cutting tool. Some properties you know are sometimes contradictory, some properties the tools need at the surface, but some other properties it may need at the bulk. For example, ideally a modern tool material for high production machining of different materials need at its core bulk strength that is tensile strength, compressive strength and bending strength, hot hardness for form stability to prevent plastic deformation and toughness to resist fracture and high thermal conductivity to disperse the heat and reduce the thermal gradient. At the surface what are needed? High hardness for abrasion resistance, resistance to heat, adhesion and diffusion kind of wear, high chemical stability and anti friction. Now this properties which is needed at the core, ball strength, hot hardness, toughness, high thermal conductivity can be provided by the conventional uncoated carbides, cemented carbides. But what about these properties that are required at the surface? That can be fulfilled by a thin hard coating on the carbide inserts. So a thin hard coating on carbide tools fulfill these requirements together. So the core carbide will fulfill the bulk requirement and the substrate and the coating will provide the qualities required at the surface. Now this diagram shows the construction of uh, coated carbides. This is the cross section of a cutting tool insert, square inserts and this is the workpiece and this is the chip flowing out, this is the cutting velocity. Now, here here you see uh, the substrate, the inside, inside is made of cemented carbide and preferably ISO K grade, K grade means tougher grade comprising having less amount of gamma phase. So this is the uh, substrate central portion made of cemented carbide and then we get a fine coating at the top of some material like titanium carbide, titanium oxycarbonitride, titanium nitride, alumina. Now this layer which is shown may be a single layer of a single material or it can be made of multi layer, maybe up to 13 layers one after another 
starting from titanium carbide ending with say alumina or titanium aluminium nitride and various materials. So, this upper uh, the upper surface of the carbide a thin layer a thin but uniform layer thin means maybe say from 5 to 15 micron thick layer will be uniformly distributed on the surface and this will be done by CVD chemical vapor deposition or PVD physical vapor deposition both methods are possible. So, what is the effect benefits of coating what benefits we get out of this coating process reduction in cutting forces by 20 to 50 percent. Now, when we reduce the cutting force what benefits we get reduction in cutting power consumption, reduction in energy consumption, reduction in dimensional deflection or inaccuracy and reduction in vibration. So, many problems will be reduced if we can reduce the cutting force for example, 20 to 50 percent by the coating. Increase in tool life yes tool life increases drastically from 200 to 500 percent or we can increase the cutting velocity or productivity keeping the tool life same say carbide tools normally they can be used at say 50 to a 60 to 120 now we can use it even at 150 uh, the cutting velocity can be increased by 50 to 150 percent that is uh, earlier it was 120 so it can be 180 meter per minute and tool life will be such a large improvement in accuracy and finish how since this tool is wear resistant and temperature resistant so the cutting edges will remain sharp so the finish and accuracy will be retained over a long time covering wider range of work materials because of limitations of the uncoated carbide they could be used within a reasonable range of work material, but when this carbides attain lot of qualities because of the coating can be used over a wi wider range of work materials. It also enables reduction in pollution of cutting fluid because this coated carbide needs or much less or not at all cutting fluid. Now, these qualities can be achieved through more heat and wear resistance of the coating because the material of the coating like titanium carbide, titanium nitride these are all more stable and wear resistive than tungsten carbide, lesser weighting, friction and built up edge formation that is more stability of the coating material with respect to the steels or work material, retention of sharpness because of wear resistance and form stability and no or less need of cutting fluid for which pollution will be also definitely controlled to some extent. Now, here you can see some you know some typical coated carbide inserts they are available in form of square, rectangle, then rhombus and hollow or solid and these patterns are given for chip breaking and compound break etcetera that is written because the coating does not change the pattern. The patterns can be given as such in the uncoated tool and at the top of that the coating will be uniformly distributed irrespective of the pattern. So, the benefits of the patterns like built up edge and chip breaking and all this thing, chip breaking and compound rake and control contact cutting will be retained. Now, further improvements on coated cutting tools are ongoing, it is not, it has not been stopped, further improvements are going on on coating technology. How? By refining the microstructure of the coating as well as the substrate, multi layering using a number of layers say according to compatibility and other characteristics within 15 micron or 17 micron there can be 13 layers of different materials to derive the benefits of all the materials possible using better coating materials which are more stable and heat resistive increasing bond strength by the process improvement in CVD or PVD. Now, come to another class of uh, advanced cutting tool that is called CERMET. We heard about ceramic, plain ceramic in the last lecture now is an improved version of ceramic. What is CERMET? CERMET word is coined taking SAR C R from ceramic plus MET from metal. What do you mean by ceramic? Titanium carbide, titanium nitride, titanium carbonitride which are refractory in nature 
and more stable against wear and thermal temperature etc and metal which normally gives uh, acts as the binder as well as imparts strength and toughness nickel nickel cobalt or iron etc how these are manufactured the cermets some Cerm cermets are manufactured in the same way ceramic tools are so cemented carbide tools are made that is powder metallurgical process okay that is powders of titanium carbonitrite this is really the cermet concept of cermet came into being long back but in 1980 onward this made a drastic improvement significant improvement since 1980 the process became powders of titanium carbonitrite which is much better more wear resistant dense and easy to process compared to titanium carbide and titanium nitride and nickel cobalt binder 10 to 20 weight percent these powders are mixed then compacted in dye and then sintered at appropriate temperature and soaking time now what are the characteristics of this modern cermets with respect to tungsten carbide tools or ceramic tools ordinary plain ceramic tools these cermets are harder and more stable and wear resistant than carbide tools but less harder than plain ceramic retains sharpness these cermets retains sharpness better than coated carbides so coated carbides improve sharpness but this cermets can maintain even better sharpness so the accurate finish machining can be done better by the cermets allow higher cutting velocity in finish cuts so finishing work can be done better and at high speed but these cermets are more brittle and less thermally conductive compared to tungsten carbide cobalt tool that is general k grade single carbide so this cermets cannot be used like tungsten carbide inserts in interrupted cutting or shock loading what are the applications of cermets which is a combination of ceramic and metal applications finishing and semi finishing of steels at higher velocity that means around 200 to 200 250 meter per minute stainless steel at moderate velocity so this is so stable and good that stainless steel can be machined rough turning and light interrupted cutting at moderate velocity 100 to 250 meter per minute not moderate velocity at high production means large force and there can be little vibration also so the material grade need to be more tough that means having larger binder content that is nickel cobalt content should be more which will impart more toughness necessary for interrupted cutting but one thing should remember that such cermets should not be used in machining aluminum and its alloys because of poor interaction now come to another tool namely coronite it is a very recent development we know high speed steel which has got some unique properties like very good strength tensile strength and toughness tungsten carbide and cobalt have some other properties like heat and wear resistance so these two have to be combined to derive the benefits from both not only that to enhance the wear resistance abrasion resistance and diffusion resistance some submicron level titanium nitride grains will be dispersed towards the matrix of high speed steel combined with tungsten carbide and cobalt this will be very wear resistant heat resistant strong and tough at the top of that the tool will be coated further by titanium nitride or titanium aluminum nitride which will be having very good bonding being mixed with titanium nitride already dispersed into the matrix now coronite tools how are they manufactured manufacturing steps for tools like drills and mill that is slender tools small slender like tools cutting tools are manufactured by this coronite material actually at the center a rod is taken first ordinary material core rod say diameter 5 20 mm of high speed steel for continuous machining or spring steel for milling type cutters for end mill uh, for interrupted cutting or end mill cutters etc then around this stainless steel or spring steel core there will be a layer of coronite that is a combination of 
high speed steel tungsten carbide cobalt and dispersed titanium nitride so this material will be just you know uh, put at that outer periphery of the central rod and that will be done by hot extrusion by hot extrusion and finally after giving the shape grinding etc this pvd coating around 2 micron of titanium carbonitride or titanium nitride this will give the further properties of coating so this coronite tools with such combination works excellent for small drills milling cutters reamers and so on what are the merits of such tool material compared to high speed steel as well as carbide longer tool life like carbides tungsten carbide plus cobalt much stronger and tougher than carbides because of the con having lot of high speed steel and it is also grindable because of the grindability this can be resharpened number of times unlike stellite you know the stellite cannot be reground so that has been obsolete now what are the applications machining wider range of work materials at higher with respect to high speed steel cutting speeds so the materials which could be cut the high speed steel uh, at certain speed now the same materials can be cut and some more materials can also be cut at higher speed and productivity by this coronite now let us come to a very very important area of advanced cutting tools namely high performance ceramics named simply hpc what are the basic types hpc tools are a basic two types silicon nitride based that is nitride based other one is oxide based alumina or oxide based now we know that the characteristics the favorable and unfavorable properties of silicon nitride as well as alumina based ceramics and it has got plenty of good properties like hot hardness chemical stability wear resistance anti adhesive anti diffusive and so on but this ceramics have got the weakness major weaknesses are the lack of strength lack of transverse after strength lack of tensile strength and fracture toughness now if these properties can be incorporated or induced into this plain ceramic by some method then this tool will work excellent and will be called ex high performance ceramic now here you see the high performance ceram the silicon nitride based tools can be converted into high performance through making cylon a kind of uh, tool ceramic tool nitride based silicon carbide whisker reinforced similarly alumina based tools can be you know strengthened and toughened by zirconia toughening silicon carbide whisker reinforcement and metal toughening metal earlier it was done by say iron molybdenum cobalt nickel but recently it has been seen that silver if added into alumina properly and then it makes a brilliant cutting tool material now before making this high performance cutting ceramics lot of attempts were made since 1950 to improve the strength and toughness of ordinary plain ceramic what are those simple techniques adding titanium oxide which reduced sintering time and temperature so it is a gain but hardness and friction friction hardness also decreased but friction decreased is favorable it raised the density and chemical stability adding little magnesium oxide into alumina so grain growth was reduced but density and toughness were raised adding nickel 2% toughness was raised using binder special binder like zirconia and nickel combined 30 70 ratio that helped reducing hard that help improving strength and toughness at the cost of hardness and wear resistance then by heat hot isostatic pressing it is a costly process but sintering time and temperature substantially reduced it made economic but as such the process is expensive and strength and toughness increased substantially then mixing silicon nitride with alumina we produced cylon which is chemically stable sinterability improved and strength and toughness improved now we shall discuss the high performance ceramic which have started in 1970 onward first is cylon it is a silicon nitride based tool what is it how is it manufactured hot pressing of a mixture of alumina and silicon nitride 
in a powder in appropriate proportion. So, we have to derive the benefit of alumina and we have to derive the benefit of silicon nitride that is toughness and alumina, chemical stability and wear resistance. Combining these two, we can we like to get a good cutting tool material targeting what is called silon. But it is produced by hot pressing, so this will be slightly costly. Now, unique properties of silon increased hot hardness, toughness, and wear resistance. So, all the good qualities required for modern cutting tool material are achieved. And application machining cast iron steels at velocity as high as 250 to 300 meter per minute it can go. But if you want if you but if one machines at even higher speed then problems will arise at very high speed and temperature rapid diffusion will begin particularly while machining material like steels because of presence of silicon nitride because you know silicon nitride is um, uh, soluble in iron at high temperature. So, this will cause diffusion wear. Now, silicon carbide reinforced silicon nitride tools. Now, silicon nitride is a very good tough ceramic. If we add silicon nitride whiskers or say fine rods of diameter say 1 micron and length about 6 micron and cross section is a hexagonal for better grip and these whiskers or rods are inserted into alumina powder or silicon nitride powder. Just like you know the rods, my steel rods are inserted into concrete beam to, to enable them uh, increase tensile strength or tens in allow tensile load. Similarly, the tensile strength, bending strength and toughness will be increased by adding silicon carbide whiskers into the ceramics. So, when these ceramics whiskers are added in silicon nitride, we, we get an excellent performance. Cutting velocity can go up to 600 meter per minute, so high for soft and hard steels and it can be around 300 to 400 meter per minute for harder steels, even harder steels. These are hard steels, uh, but these tools are very expensive and it has got some other problem also. Now, the high performance ceramics alumina base. I told you in the previous lecture that alumina is more preferred to silicon nitride for its some unique properties like it is more chemically stable and easy to fabricate, easy to process and it is more stable against steel. These are the reasons why it is preferred to silicon nitride. Manufacturing is easier handling. Now, this alumina based ceramics are strengthened and toughened to get high performance ceramic by three methods. What are those three methods? One is a zirconia toughening. So, zirconia say partially stabilized zirconia or stabilized zirconia will be added say 5 to 20 percent into alumina. So, that will cause transformation toughening. Then again addition of silicon carbide whiskers say 5 to 20 percent into alumina powder that will reinforce and finally, alumina strengthened and toughened by metal composites, metal like silver. Now, we shall discuss one by one. Now, zirconia, zirconia as I told when added into mixed with alumina, it enhances the strength and toughness. How? What is the characteristic of zirconia? Zirconia exists in three forms at ambient temperature monoclinic, at 1100 centigrade tetragonal and 2300 centigrade and above cubic. Now, the property is when it converts from tetragonal to monoclinic, it expands and in a mix induces compressive strength. Now, by doping with certain material, this tetragonal form phase of zirconia is brought at the ambient temperature. Now, when this metastable tetragonal particles are compressed or pressed or stressed during machining, the, this tet metastable tetragonal particles which have been frozen by doping into the uh, ambient uh, ceramic tool at ambient temperature during machining those particles will be stressed. When this will be stressed, this will expand and shear. This expansion or transformation will cause lot of induction or compressive stress. You see the example. Suppose there is a crack propagating in a matrix of 
alumina powders and these are zirconia say partially or fully stabilized zirconia and they are stabilized by some doping action. Now what happens when this crack propagates there is a stress field within this stress field whenever this zirconia particles will be stressed they will expand and due to the expansion they will induce compressive stress that compressive stress will nullify or reduce the tensile stress or nullify it or induce compressive stress and you know compressive stress is very favorable that improves toughness tensile stress is detrimental. Now what is the toughening mechanism by partially stabilized zirconia? Phase transformation that is conversion from tetragonal to monoclinic, crack branching the crack will branch so the strength of the cracks will decrease and micro cracking and there will be further micro cracking around the expanded zirconia particles. So this will also weaken the main crack to propagate. Now reinforcement by ceramics, reinforcement of ceramics by silicon carbide whiskers. I already told what is silicon carbide whisker. You know silicon carbide is a very very hard stable and wear resistant material. Okay. Now thin rods of such material have been made they are called whiskers and as I told the diameter around say 2 to 6 micron diameter 1 micron and cross section approximately hexagonal. These rods are mixed and dispersed in alumina matrix and this reinforces this induces strength and toughness how toughening mechanisms are crack bridging fiber pull out and crack deflection some you can see the diagrams this is crack bridging so the crack will be bridged by the hardened particles the silicon carbide rods or whiskers the fibers will be pulled out and while pulling out will absorb certain amount of energy and reduce the crack propagation energy and crack deflection and which will also weaken the crack propagation and improve toughness. Now metal toughened alumina, toughening alum alumina by addition of metals. Now I told that in there are many applications other than cutting tool where this ceramic or similar uh, ceramic have been toughened by addition of metal powder uh, say metal phase like iron, molybdenum, nickel, chromium and so on. Those have already some application but in case of cutting tool those metals have not been that successful but metal like silver work excellent. So about 5 to say 20 percent by weight silver oxide were mixed with alumina then while centering this silver oxide was decomposed oxygen went out and silver remained dispersed within the alumina matrix and that dispersion of silver fine particles throughout the alumina matrix enhance toughness and strength. What are the mechanisms? Crack bridging. Now this diagram shows crack bridging. Now suppose the crack is propagating here and these are the soft say silver particles. So they have to be stressed, they will be stressed and try to hold the crack or arrest the crack thereby the crack propagation will be either arrested or its strength will be reduced. Crack deflection, this shows the crack deflection, crack was propagating, now it is made to deflect in number of directions by which the crack strength is reduced and crack deflection here also de shows an example of crack deflection, it is bound to move over a wider path so the strength will fall, so crack propagation will be arrested ultimately. And finally intergranular fracture, sometimes the fracture takes place through the uh, grains of alumina if some silver particles are added into that. Here this shows this is an actual cutting tool uh, made by ceramic added with silver. Inside you see at the outer periphery it is a white because it is pure alumina and this there is no silver almost there is no silver but at the inside there is a black color because of presence of silver. This is very good you know this upper surface works as a coating where insulation is desired more abrasion resistance is desired and heat resistance that will be given by the pure alumina but at the core because of the presence of silver you will get lot of toughness and strength bulk, hard, bulk strength.
and toughness. Now, the conclusions on high performance ceramics. We have, you have heard several high performance ceramics, silicon nitride based and alumina based. Now, let us have a quick look into the high performance ceramics. High performance ceramics are replacing carbides very rapidly all over the world for higher productivity because it can work at higher speed, higher velocity at higher speeds. Lower manufacturing cost, yes, the ingredients are cheaper and the manufacturing process is also simpler than carbides and coated carbides. Amply availability of its ingredients. Now, the ingredients of tungsten carbide that is tungsten and cobalt are very strategic materials. These two materials are not available in most of the countries. In very few countries tungsten and cobalt are available. So, the whole machining world have to depend upon the import of such materials from those countries. So, it is a very risk, but in ceramic cutting tools the ingredients like say alumina, silicon nitride or zirconia are available in plenty and these are of low cost. Carbides will also exist for high now. Hyper ceramics will not totally remove carbides because carb cemented carbides will also exist like high speed steel for high toughness and transverse of strength. Zirconia toughened alumina is successful in all respects. It has got no problem. It is the most successful amongst all the high performance ceramic considering this uh, manufacturing cost, manufacturing process, handling operations, then uh, uh, process routes, uh, application range and availability of ingredients, safety. In all respects, zirconia toughened alumina appear to be the best and widely used. Whisker reinforced alumina are most productive because this is very, very hard and tough simultaneously. But some questions have been raised about the health hazard. It has been uh, observed or it has been said or uh, you know reported by some people that there is a chance of having some hazards like cancerous problems and all these things if these whiskers are not carefully or you know properly handled during manufacture as well as use. But these are this problem will be uh, shortly overcome and whisker based alumina tools will become an excellent cutting tool and will be used all over the world. Of course, it is expensive. Now, silver toughened alumina seem to be excellent. Now, look silver toughened alumina which has not yet been that uh, you know uh, practiced all over the world it is still under research and optimization or commercialization, but it has got tremendous potential. Silver toughened alumina seem to be excellent for simple and low cost process route. There is no need, no, no need of environmental control and the working temperature etcetera are not that high. Very good performance for substantial toughness and TRS transverse up to strength. So, strength and toughness have been substantially improved, thermally conductive, thermal conductivity. So, the thermal shock resistance will improve and self lubrication this is another novel thing which is imparted or possibly imparted by silver because the silver dispersed silver will gradually ooze out through the pores and gradually reach at the chip tool interface. And when this silver particles reach even in a small volume at the chip tool interface it functions as solid lubricant that way it will reduce the friction and the consequences of friction. This is how this silver toughened alumina will become an excellent cutting tool it will be commercialized shortly. Now there are two more super materials one is cubic boron nitride and other one is diamond. What is cubic boron nitride? These tools were introduced in 1970. Cubic boron nitride of structure cubic. Now, what are the characteristics for which it is so potential? Cubic boron nitride is the hardest next to diamond. That is the point. That means it is extremely hard and hence abrasion resistant, form stability will be high, but obviously it is expensive like diamond, almost like diamond. Now, how these tools are made? Made by high temperature, high pressure bonding of 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter thick cubic boron nitride. You know cubic boron nitride will be produced in thin strips of 0 0.5 to 1 millimeter thick 
by high temperature high pressure and then this layer will be bonded on cobalt based carbide inserts. So, at the core it will be carbide and at the top it will be a layer of 0.5 millimeter 1 millimeter thick cubic boron nitride which is extremely hard and stable. High strength really extreme extremely high strength high toughness wear resistance and stability. So, all these essential most important in properties required for cutting tools are available in cubic boron nitride. It is very much chemically and thermally stable and up to 1200 degrees centigrade. So, its thermal and chemical stability to such a high extent enables machining at very uh, favorable condition there will be no wear and tear within a short time and finish and accuracy will be excellent. Not only finish the thermal the surface integrity will be very good there is no residual stress no burning and nothing. What are the applications? It is such a tool which can be applied for both the roughing and finishing simultaneously. Same tool you give large depth of cut so bulk material removal and finishing will be available in one stroke. Medium to hard cast iron and alloy steels can be machined nigh hard you know nigh hard these are very difficult to machine work hardenable material nigh hard in conel mnemonics these are nickel based super alloys etcetera which are exotic materials are very difficult to machine by other cutting tools, but by CBN we can cut it easily and it CBN can cut also other exotic non metals. Now, cutting velocity because cutting velocity is the index of productivity so, this cutting tool CBN novel tool can handle on one side wide range of work material and including the very hard materials and at the same time can work at high speed. You see cutting velocity for cast iron ordinary or soft to medium cast iron 300 to 400 meter per minute with excellent finish and accuracy. Hard cast iron 80 to 300 meter per minute super alloys like mnemonic inconel titanium alloy where the RC Rockwell hardness is above 35 can be easily machined by the CBN wheel and these are very difficult to machine by other tools and this super alloys can be machined at quite reasonably high speed 80 to 140 meter per minute and hard steels or hardened steels up to 45 RC hardened materials can be machined up to 300 meter per minute and this enables dry machining or hard machining hard turning or dry machining with a minimum requirement or no required no requirement of cutting fluid. So, pollution will be much controlled. Now, the diamond tools diamond tools <coughs> now before that say cubic boron nitride it has got tremendous property wide applicability on one hand it can be used I am repeating for very high productivity it can be used for very good finish surface finish and surface integrity it can cover wide range of work material steels which are very difficult to machine hard steels by other tool materials they can be easily machined and perfectly machined by CBN and all this and hard turning which is the modern technology coming up hard turning or dry turning are coming up that is possible by this tool material exotic materials like nickel based super alloy titanium based super alloy which are coming up very rapidly can be uh, machine with sufficient speed by CBN, but only problem that remains manufacturing is difficult no doubt for that the cost is also high, but time is coming that this will be used this will be produced in a very simpler in a better way in a more inexpensive way and this will uh, cover wide range of machining and the cost will come down hopefully. Next and last is the diamond tools. Diamond tools you know diamond is the hardest material amongst all the material known diamond is the hardest and we need the cutting tools to be extremely hard to prevent plastic deformation as well as wear. It is highly thermally conductive so it, it can stand withstand thermal shocks 
then quite tough. So, mechanical shocks can also be you know tolerated by such diamond tool. It is excellent, no doubt. But before I go into depth, obviously, diamond is very, very expensive. It is diamond and CBN wheels are most expensive amongst all the cutting tool materials. Now, diamond tools are available in three forms. One is single crystal, the single crystals or single grain, okay, and this can be a natural single grain or it can be synthetic. Now, natural, if it is a natural, it will be very hard and it, it has got very sharp cutting edges. So, cutting will be very good, but it will be not of perfect geometrical shape. It is a natural shape, so you cannot use it very widely. All right. What are the limitations of this naturally available single crystals? Cleavage. There are certain layers within the body, within the grain, where along which it slides under the pressure. This is a cleavage. So, these single crystals will fracture at high temperature and high stress. Less tough. This is a very wear resistant and hard. So, toughness is less. So, it cannot withstand that vibration. This is costly and less available. This natural, these are not very available and these are expensive. But recently, this single crystal diamond grains are manufactured synthetically by high temperature and ultra high temperature and high pressure synthesis process. Synthetic single grain diamonds are manufactured and polycrystalline also later on. Now, another form later on. So, this single crystal diamond tools, what are they used? They are used mainly for wheel dressing of wheels, the wheel dressing and truing. Secondly, for making very small drills or milling cutters, where only one grain is sufficient to fulfill the desired requirement. Then came PCD, polycrystalline diamond. Polycrystalline diamond, how it is manufactured? Here, a thin strip of say diamond, fine powders of diamond, say submicron uh, diamond particles of the different size, shape, and orientation will be first, uh, you know, sintered into thin strips, say 0.5 millimeter or around that millimeter, and then these thin strips will be bonded under high pressure and temperature on cobalt based tungsten carbide. Why cobalt based? Because cobalt based gives the toughness at the bulk. So, at the bulk it remains tough at the carbide and at the top is a thin layer of thin strip of polycrystalline diamond and polycrystalline means there will be no cleavage. Such polycrystalline diamond has found wide application and it has been ex uh, working excellent and giving sometime 100 times more tool life than carbide in certain applications. Now, what are the merits? It has got several merits. Okay. What two important merits are the more tough than single diamond and no cleavage. Because of having no cleavage, this will survive much longer, very, very long tool life. And what are the limitations? Okay, this has got certain limitations. But I, before I go into the limitations, what are the applications? Applications, now before that, let us see the uh, limitations. Less wear resistive. Why less wear resistive? Because it is bonded on cobalt based tungsten carbide. So, if it is used at very high uh, temperature, then the uh, diamond will react with the cobalt and graphitize. So, it should not be used at very high speed. So, at high speed, the wear resistance will decrease. Size and shape restriction. Since PCD is a polycrystalline diamond, is obtained the form of first made in form of strips. Flat strips can easily be man manufactured, but complex shaped strips cannot be manufactured that easily and economically. So, there is a question of size and shape. If the shape is very complex, if the size is very large, then this polycrystalline diamond is not suitable. Because of the manufacturing process and thick layer, the cost will be definitely high. But it has got tremendous application in machining uh, various materials, all say exotic materials, namely say 
uh, slates, stones, then marbles, then uh, ceramics, FRPs, polymers, all these things. No, but the, the problem comes with the steel. So when PCD comes into contact with iron at high temperature, then this is a mutual solubility. The diamond gets dissolved into iron or it takes iron from the steel and it undergoes graphitization and it softens. So, it cannot work. So, diamond tools are not at all used, should never be used for machining steels. That has to be remembered. Now, <coughs> CVD coating. Now, to overcome, to overcome the limitations of this PCD, polycrystalline diamond, a new technique has been introduced that is CVD coating on carbide tips. Ordinary carbide tips, preferably K grade, that is tougher grade, will be coated, given, will be given a coating, a thin coating of crystalline diamond. The coating thickness may be say uh, 6 micron to 10 micron, even less sometime. But this thin layer of diamond, polycrystalline diamond layer imparts lot of wear resistance and improves the performance, the cutting tool spectacularly. Now, this diamond is coated on carbide tools in number of methods, but one is the most favorable is CVD, chemical vapor deposition. And this deposition, CVD can also be a various type, you know, hot by hot filament technique, then uh, microwave technique and combustion te technique like that. Out of those CVD chemical vapor deposition technique is very good because here from methane the carbon is derived and deposited on the tungsten carbide substrate in thin layer, but it takes it is a slow process. Uh, but what are the merits? The merits of this CVD coated tool First of all, you see there is no binder. It is a coating tool and given the coating, there is no binder. And even before coating this diamond on the tungsten carbide, the cobalt can be removed by etching to make it free from cobalt to prevent graphitization. So, this anchoring or the bond strength is very high. High hardness, high hardness only at the surface. The coating, though thin, it is very, very hard and wear resistant. So, abrasion will be much less, but the central it is tough that will take away the vibration and load. This thin coating of diamond, crystalline diamond is thermally stable. You know, it can withstand very, very high temperature, say up to 800 centigrade. So, it can machine at high speed. And as such, there is no problem. And the problem of PCD, like say size and shape restriction, that is difficult to or uneconomic for large size cutting tools is overcome by CVD. Because in CVD process only 6 or 7, 8 micron thick layer is de deposited on the entire surface of the cutting tool. So, the total amount of diamond required will be much less in case of coating, diamond coating. So, the irrespective of the size it can be done. Besides that, even if the shape or the configuration of the cutting tool is very complex, then there will be no problem because this coating will automatically deposit it on any surface. Now, there are certain cutting tools such as say uh, with very complex shape like form tools, drills, reamers, milling cutters, hobs and such kind in such kind of carbide cutting tool, uh, diamond cannot be, you know PCD cannot be possible. So, only CVD process is feasible. So, this is very good for such kind of small to large size cutting tools of any complex shape. Now, here you see one example that what is the application range of this diamond? Accepting iron based material or some other material like cobalt 
diamond is excellent. Sometimes it is the only tool which can be used for machining such kind of exotic materials and CBN is another novel tool which not only can machine any exotic material, it can also machine steel which cannot be done by diamond. So diamond tools can machine say non-ferrous metals and alloys, non-metals specially, ceramics, polymers, FRPs, composites, everything excepting diamond, excepting steels. But there is another problem which we see machining of very soft material like say copper and pure aluminium. This is say for pure aluminium. Aluminium is soft, pure aluminium is, is even softer, but machining of aluminium is tremendous, aluminium and aluminium alloys. This figure shows, this diagram shows you see that after 0.5 minute, the half a minute of machining pure aluminium, the condition of the rake surface of the tool. When you machine by tungsten carbide, lot of aluminium got deposited. When titanium carbide coated tool, there was lot of deposition. And the titanium nitride coated tool, there is lot of damage of the tool. Titanium boride could not reduce. Alumina coating, that induced lot of built up edge. Aluminium oxide alon phase, which is very, very stable material and novel material, even alon phase could not prevent such kind of damage of the carbide tools. You see, alon phase, you know, the carbide tool at the top there is an alon phase that also could not prevent built up edge formation and damage of the tool. Even within half a minute, all the tools underwent such kind of problems. Whereas, when the same material was machined at high speed by diamond coated carbide tool, you see the cutting edge remains as good as it was. There is no sign of any built up edge, any damage, any chemical reaction or anywhere within 0.5 minute. So this kind of material, aluminum and aluminum alloys like aluminum silicon, etc., can be machined excellently by diamond coated tools. So this is all about, but do not think that this is the end of high modern cutting tools, advanced cutting tools. Continuous research is going on in the laboratory and in other areas in industry to develop new and near type of cutting tool materials by composition, by process, by post processing, finishing process and by coating process and by composition or and composite structures and all these things. So this will continue and in your life you will find many more novel cutting tool materials whose per property will improve, performance will improve, but the cost per piece or the product will gradually come down. So there will be revolution continuing in the field of manufacturing, in the field of cutting tool development and machining. Thank you.